Humans have traveled the world for centuries by sea, and while it's far safer now than at any time in the past, unexpected events still occasionally result in them sinking. Incredibly, it's believed that there are as many as 3 million shipwrecks lying on the ocean floor, with some dating back as far as 10,000 years ago, and we only know where just a fraction of them are located. And the story of how they became sunken and destroyed is a story you'll want to hear. Let's take a look at 15 of the most incredible sunken ships. Number 15. SS Yongala First built in Newcastle, England in 1903, the SS Yongala was a steel passenger and freight steamer that would go on to undertake journeys across the world. It was eventually purchased by the Adelaide Steamship Company in Australia, where it connected Queensland with other parts of the country. In March of 1911, though, tragedy struck as a cyclone swept through the region. With 49 passengers and 79 crew on board, the Yongala was last seen sailing into the Whitsunday Passage near the city of Townsville, and it sank soon after. All the lives and cargo were lost, and it would be another 32 years until the wreck was discovered by a World War II minesweeper. A full investigation went on several years later, when it was finally confirmed to be what remains of the Yongala. But by this point, it had already begun being consumed by the reef. Amazingly, because of where she sank, the ship, with a length of 361 feet, or 110 meters, is one of the largest known intact historic shipwrecks on Earth. The way that it's now teeming with fish and other reef life means that it's become an extremely popular dive site, with as many as 10,000 people visiting it each year. Number 14. Iron Scow it's one of the most recognizable shipwrecks in North America, but despite this, surprisingly few people actually know how the Iron Scow, which can be seen upstream of Niagara Falls, managed to get stuck in this precarious position. Historically, maintenance work has been carried out in the river above the falls to prevent sediment from restricting the water flow, and in the 1910s, most of this work was done by the Great Lakes Dredge and Dock Company. In August of 1918, two workers had been in the river on this scow to dredge up a sandbank, and after finishing, a tugboat was sent to retrieve them. Something went wrong, and the scow broke loose with the two workers still on board. It's not clear if they were able to release the sand and silt back into the water, but luckily the scow became lodged on a shoal of rocks around 2,500 feet or 766 meters from the edge of the waterfall. This was too close for a rescue boat to be sent, so a grappling gun was instead used to send over a lifeline to bring the workers back to safety, and they finally set foot on the bank more than 17 hours after the ordeal had begun. The iron scow, however, was a lost cause, and it was in such a treacherous position there was no choice but to leave it there. It's been deteriorating ever since, and now shows signs of movement, with some believing it'll fully break up within the next few years. Number 13. The Endurance Ernest Shackleton was an explorer who led three expeditions to Antarctica, and was one of the leading figures in what is known as the Heroic Age of Antarctic Exploration. Not everything went entirely to plan, though, and one of the journeys, called the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition, went wrong almost from the start. Shackleton had purchased a new ship, which he nicknamed the Endurance, and took a route through the Weddell Sea, with the intent of reaching Vassal Bay. The problem, of course, was at this time the water was covered with pack ice, and while the Endurance was designed to be able to cope with this to a point, the crew soon found themselves frozen in, and they had no choice but to float with the ice and wait for a chance to escape it once it broke up. This moment never came, and the frozen prison continued to thicken, which made the ship particularly vulnerable to the pressure waves that travel through the ice. These began to damage the ship, and the crew were forced to abandon it in November of 1915. Everyone survived, but the Endurance was left in a watery tomb that wouldn't be rediscovered until an expedition was sent in search of it in March of 2022. Amazingly, the footage shows the wooden vessel to be in virtually perfect condition, far more so than you'd expect to see elsewhere, and this is mainly because despite there being signs of creatures living on the ship, there are no species that have evolved to feed on wood, and it's not a material that's present in sufficient quantities around Antarctica to sustain an ecosystem. Number 12. USS Kitty Wake The USS Kitty Wake was built for the U.S. Navy and commissioned in 1946. As a Chanticleer-class submarine rescue vehicle, the 251-foot or 76-meter-long vessel was only armed with a 50 caliber machine gun, but wouldn't ever find itself in a battle on its own, as it was a support ship for Submarine Squadron 6. She mainly supported subs while they were undergoing sea trials and testing new weaponry, 
but was also used for other oceanic research and rescue missions. It was the Kittywake, for example, that recovered the black box from the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986 and would still remain in service for a further eight years after that. In 1994, the decision was made to transfer the ship into the ownership of the government of the Cayman Islands, and the Kittywake was purposefully sunk off Seven Mile Beach and Marine Park to form an artificial reef. Now ranging in depth from 15 feet or 4.6 meters to 64 feet or 19 and a half meters, it's become a popular dive site and has been credited with helping the reef partially recover. The opportunity to visit the Kitty Wake may not be there forever, though. A storm in 2017 actually moved it along the seabed towards an already established reef, and this could be a sign that it wasn't adequately secured, and could mean that if another storm hits, it'll be moved somewhere that's too deep to dive in, or that it'll simply break up. Number 11. SS Thistlegorm The SS Thistlegorm was a British-built cargo ship that was first launched in 1940, but after going straight into transporting supplies for the war effort, she wouldn't last long. In fact, the vessel only completed three voyages, one to collect steel and aircraft parts from the United States, one for grain from Argentina, and one final one to pick up rum from the Caribbean, before she was sunk by a German bomber aircraft while sailing through the Red Sea in 1941, while en route to Alexandria in Egypt. The 415-foot or 126-meter-long vessel didn't stand a chance, and two two-and-a-half-ton bombs that made contact with the stern of the ship meant that it was soon taking on water, and nine crew members lost their lives. The whereabouts of the Thistlegorm was unknown for a decade until Jacques Cousteau pieced together stories from local fishermen to track it down. After his visit, however, the location was forgotten again, and it was only in the early 1990s when Sharm El Sheikh began to develop as a popular resort that it was rediscovered. By this time, the Thistlegorm had become an incredible artificial reef, with the ship's structure still clearly visible, and to this day, it's one of the most popular sites to visit in the Red Sea, with large populations of tuna, barracuda, turtles, and eels often swimming all around it. Number 10. Peshtigo and St. Andrews More than 140 years ago, two ships famously crashed while sailing across Lake Michigan. But because records from the time were relatively sparse and the lake is large and deep in places, their precise location was a mystery. That was until 2019, when a historian who specialized in studying the Great Lakes was able to narrow down a search area, and the two schooners, the Peshtigo and the St. Andrews, were successfully detected by a bottom-penetrating sounder. Amazingly, they were both at a depth of around 200 feet or 61 meters, but were only 10 feet or 3 meters apart. Their masts are entangled with one another, and there's a large amount of coal spread around the site. On one of the vessels, there's a huge gash along the side, which shows clearly where they made contact and why they both sank so quickly. Not only are they incredible wrecks to see, but these two represent an important time in American history. The 161-foot or 49-meter and 383-ton Peshtigo, along with a 143-foot or 43-meter and 416-ton St. Andrews, were two of the largest and most iconic vessels of the Civil War era, and as such, their wreck sites are now protected under Michigan law to preserve them for future study. Number 9. HMS Vixen the HMS Vixen first set sail for the British Navy in November of 1865 and was in many ways seen as an experimental vessel. It was the first one to enter the fleet with twin propellers and had a hull made of composite materials, and it was hoped that the design would become a dominant force on the waves in the coming years. The sea trials were less than impressive for the gunboat, however, and after finding that it had a relatively low top speed, and after almost being lost in a storm in the Irish Channel in 1876, the vessel was taken along with her sister ship to Bermuda, where they were moored in the reef line as floating defensive batteries. Despite the extra protection this provided, the authorities in Bermuda were still concerned about a gap in the reef that would make the port vulnerable to attack from a difficult angle. So the decision was made to sink the Vixen to act as a block ship. Her engines were removed, she was towed into place, and huge scuttling charges were detonated that broke her keel and sank her to the seabed. The Vixen rested in position at a depth of 33 feet, or about 10 meters, around a fifth of a mile or just over a third of a kilometer offshore. It has since become established as a part of the reef, and with a part of its hull still visible above the waterline, it's a one-of-a-kind place to dive at. Number 8. 
the sweepstakes. Built in Burlington, Ontario in 1867, the sweepstakes was a 119-foot or 36.3-meter long schooner that weighed around 218 tons and operated mainly carrying cargo around Lake Huron. It did this for 20 years, but in August of 1885, it was damaged near Cove Island in shallow waters. It was hoped that it could be fixed, so the vessel was towed to Big Tub Harbor in the Fathom 5 National Marine Park. But the repairs couldn't be carried out in time, so it sank. Still laden with coal, the cargo was retrieved, but the remains of the sweepstakes can still be seen just below the water's surface to this day. At a depth of just over 20 feet or 6 meters, it's an almost picture-perfect wreck. Even though parts of it have worn away, it's regarded as one of the best-preserved 19th-century Great Lakes schooners, and it's become, unsurprisingly, one of the most photographed sites in the region. Visitors are still allowed to dive around it, too, but actual entry inside the wreck is now strictly prohibited because authorities realize that the bubbles being exhaled by divers were causing further damage to the main structure. Still, it's a great opportunity to get up close to a ship that was typical of its time and get a first-hand glimpse of history. Number 7. USNS General Hoyt S. Vandenberg First launched in 1943, the USNS General Hoyt S. Vandenberg was a General Geo Squire-class transport ship that was designed for use by the U.S. Navy during the Second World War. She was a huge vessel for the time, measuring 522 feet or 160 meters long, and this meant that there was room on board for the 356 crew, as well as up to 3,300 troops. During her service, the ship changed ownership between the Navy and the Air Force several times and was repurposed as a missile range instrumentation ship in the 1960s. But it was what happened after she was decommissioned that she'll be best remembered for. She was acquired in the 1990s by a consortium looking to create an artificial reef near Key West and was finally sunk on purpose in 2009, and that became the second largest man-made reef in the world. As a result of this, dive tourism in the region has significantly increased, with people traveling from all over the world to get a chance to experience this historic vessel in a unique marine environment for themselves. Number 6. Peter Iredale Built in Maryport, England in 1890, the 285-foot or 87-meter Peter Iredale, which was named after its owner, was a four-masted steel bark sailing ship that was made with steel plates around an iron frame. It was regarded as an unusual design at the time, but one that worked extremely well for transporting cargo across the Atlantic, and despite the treacherous conditions that it was able to tackle with ease, it was the shallow waters on the approach to the Columbia River in Oregon that would prove to be her downfall. In 1906, she was headed towards Portland, but with a thick mist and strong winds, and even though the crew had spotted the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse and made the necessary course corrections, the Peter Iredale was pushed up against the sands of what is now known as Clatsop's Pit and became wedged in. There was very little damage to the hull, but attempts to refloat the ship took too long and it became irretrievably stuck which meant that the salvagers simply took all the material that they could and left the bow, a few ribs, and the mast where they lay. These ruins are still visible reaching out of the sand where it's now part of the Fort Stevens State Park, and because of the incredible imagery, has become one of the most popular sites of interest in the area. Number 5. Mediterranean Sky Originally known as the MS City of York, the Mediterranean Sky was built in 1953 as a combination passenger liner to serve the route between London, the Canary Islands, and various coastal cities around South Africa. It was a revolutionary design that could complete the trip between England and Cape Town in just 15 days, and along with her sister ship, supported a hugely important trade route. With the introduction of new and faster alternatives, she was eventually sold in 1971 to Cara Georgis Lines, which provided ferry services throughout the Mediterranean, and that's when she was renamed the Mediterranean Sky. She continued in operation for a further 25 years, but in 1996, tragedy struck. The ship began to list after becoming stuck in the Aleutius Bay in Greece and remained there for six years. The wreck was then towed to shallower waters and was breached, but then capsized and sank by 2003. Since then, the Mediterranean sky has remained there, half underwater, and it's become somewhat of a famous sight to see. 
The story then took another unexpected turn in 2017, when members of the graffiti crew 1UP managed to gain access to the ship and paint a huge 1UP image on the exposed side, something that's still visible to this day and can even be seen on Google Earth. Number 4. MS World Discoverer Created and built for Danish company Bewa Cruises in the mid-1970s, the MS World Discoverer was a 287-foot or 87.5-meter-long cruise liner that offered guests the chance to go places seldom visited by other operators. During the summer in the Southern Hemisphere, it would travel to Antarctica, the Falkland Islands, Chile, and Argentina. And at other times of the year, it would go to the Pacific Islands and then to the Northern Hemisphere to Alaska and the Bering Sea. Classified as a 1A ice class, which meant it could cope with minor ice flows, its range meant it was able to traverse the northern passage, but there are other perils in the ocean it wasn't so prepared for. In April of 2000, the World Discoverer was sailing around the Solomon Islands and struck an uncharted rock or reef in the Sandfly Passage. Luckily, all of the passengers were evacuated by a local vessel, and the captain managed to move the World Discoverer into nearby Roderick Bay. Investigations found the damage too severe to fix, though, so it was declared a complete loss and has remained in that position ever since. It's a strange wreck to see, especially with such glorious surroundings, and it's now become a popular visitor attraction for locals, as well as a stop-off point for other cruise ships that pass through the area. Number 3. Giannis D. Launched from the Kurashima Dockyard in Japan in September of 1969, the Giannis D, which was originally called the Shoyomaru, was a 326-foot or 99.5-meter-long bulk carrier ship. Over the following years, it changed ownership several times before being purchased by the Dermark Shipping and Trading Corporation that's based in Greece and began serving routes between ports in the Mediterranean and Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. In April of 1983, it was on a journey between Croatia and Yemen that it encountered difficulties while traveling through the Suez Canal, and as it exited the man-made waterway, it mistakenly took the wrong route into the Red Sea. Steaming at full speed, it smashed into the Abu Nahas Reef, and after suffering extreme damage, was tied by its crew to the reef. A storm broke it up before salvaging crews could rescue it, and it now lies on the reef in three distinct sections. Because of its position close to resorts, it is now one of the most visited dive sites in the Red Sea, especially as it's in shallow waters and is suited to novices and experts alike. Number 2. Fujikawa Maru Built as a cargo ship in 1938, but soon requisitioned for use by the Imperial Japanese Navy for use as an armed aircraft transport during the Second World War, the 436-foot or 133-meter-long Fujikawa Maru is one of the most famous wreck dive sites in the world. It was part of the Japanese fleet that was moored in Truk Lagoon in February of 1944, where it was undergoing repairs after being struck by a U.S. torpedo bomber. And this would become its final resting place. That's because in that month, the U.S. forces launched an assault on the lagoon called Operation Hailstone and laid waste to the Japanese vessels that were there at the time. The Fujikara Maru was hit repeatedly by bombers and torpedo bombers and sank. The lagoon itself is seen as a ship graveyard because so many vessels along with their crews sank there. But while they're all incredible to swim around, this one is generally regarded as the best and one of the greatest wreck dive sites anywhere on the planet. What makes it really interesting are the remains of nine disassembled Mitsubishi aircraft in one of the forward holds, one of which, an A5M Claude, is the only known surviving example, as well as a large number of bow guns and various other armaments that were being prepared to be installed. Number 1. The Titanic it's the most famous shipping disaster to have ever taken place, and also because of where it sank, one of the most stunning known wrecks in the world. But the story of the Titanic may soon be coming to an end. The 883-foot or 269-meter White Star Line vessel, with between 3,300 and 3,600 people on board, set off on its doomed voyage from Ireland towards New York in April of 1912. Just four days into the crossing, though, when it was around 375 miles or 600 kilometers to the south of Newfoundland in Canada, the ship struck an iceberg, which caused catastrophic damage and led to its sinking within three hours. The full death toll was never known for certain, but definitely exceeded 1,500 people, and for a long time, the exact site of where the ship hit the seafloor was unknown. 
In 1985, though, it was found at a depth of more than 12,000 feet, or 3,700 meters, and at the time, it was thought that it had sunk in one piece, and the plan was to return it to the surface. The team found it to be in two pieces, though, that were spread across a third of a mile, but apart from that, it was in remarkably good condition because of the depth and the freezing temperatures. It has since been revisited a number of times, and incredible footage has been recorded of the wreck. Evidence has now been found that it's decaying at a much faster speed than before, however, and it's now believed that it will be just a decade or so before very little will remain. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.